Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Raz Hockey. This is episode 120. Uh, thanks for joining us for another episode this week. Um, it's exciting. Uh, it's been an exciting couple of days with the Stanley yeah, Cup playoffs, and we'll talk about absolutely. that later. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, who's our guest for this week, Bush? We have a fan of the show that we met at the Freddy last year. Got got to know him quite well. His name is Lucas Isiquisis, of from Beardies and Okamasa's First Nation. Yeah, we uh, sat down and talked to him yesterday after uh, the big win yeah. in Game 5. So he's an Oilers fan, so him and Bush were still on cloud nine and yeah. smiling from year to year. <laughs> so, yeah, it was good to sit down with uh, Lucas. Uh, we met him, like Bush said, we met him at the Freddy. Uh, he messaged us and uh, we hooked him up with some uh, some connections with, uh, with imports. So yeah. ever since then, we've been... Uh, friends with him and it was so we we call him the niche version of mike medano yeah because remember when mike medano used to skate in the 90s like when he played for dallas stars his black back of his jersey would just flap just, yeah that's how uh lucas is just when he was flying there at the freddy his jersey was just flapping too bad it doesn't do that for us our jersey doesn't do that for us when we skate well, maybe because it's too tight <laughs> Mine's a little form. I think because it's a form fitting now these days. Yeah, must be. <laughs> like, like I haven't skated since maybe since our free April. agent tryout. Yeah, since that, and we skate. We were only lasted what fifteen <laughs> minutes, maybe on that ice. <laughs> I wanted to leave Belcher fast because those guys probably wanted a pickup game. Yeah, but before that, I think it was probably April or. Easter weekend was the last time I yeah. skated. I'm not looking for, like, uh, usually in Kenora, well, every summer in Kenora, every spring they take out the ice, uh, April, May, June, and the end of, they open it with the end of July, right? So it's yeah. going to be like four months for us till oh, we haven't, no. till like, we haven't skated. And I'm not looking forward to putting on my equipment. You, ever, um, you see that? That meme going around with uh, one of the apes from the oh uh, yeah the series. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was a, a our my uh, receptionist at the Ben office at the community I work for. She goes, uh, "Holy man, Trev!" I was like, "What? What's wrong? Your face is getting chubby." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, "Just gets cold." Though. I know. <laughs> the first thing in the morning, I'm like, "Do you really?" Can you give me a couple hours or something? <laughs> yeah. This right off the bat. I was like, damn. <laughs> so I think it's time that I got to start doing something. I don't know. I mean, like with you, you get exercise because you play, you play softball and stuff like that. Yeah. But I don't play softball no more. And so I can find like Paula goes to the gym, but she goes like six in the morning. I'm not getting up six in the morning to go to the gym. And, no. Because come lunch supper time i'll eat all that calories back like is mm -hmm. it better to work out during the day i mean morning afternoon or in the evening because i have no idea i think in the evening is better because i think it lose easy. the you can lose the calories that you've consumed yeah. all day right mm -hmm. i think yeah i think towards the evening early evening like maybe 4 30 there's no way I'm going to the gym six in the morning. Yeah. Never. Way too early. So, but yeah, well, maybe anyone who's uh, hitting the gym, what's a good time for you to hit the gym? Yeah. yeah. So, as you can see, I'm wearing my Oilers t shirts. Um, I don't know why I decided to wear it today. I wore it to work. Maybe because <laughs> maybe I got to get a Florida jersey or a Florida t shirt. Oh. So. If they had a Montour one like this, like this is a Zach Hyman one. Mm -hmm. I wore this a couple of weeks on a couple of weeks ago on the show. Uh, my sister in law Nicole gave it to me as a gift. Uh, but if the, if there's a Montour one like that, I would get it. But uh, uh, shout outs. Do you have any shout outs for uh, episode one hundred and twenty? I do have a shout out. Um, I was playing softball against Luke Garrow's team, and a guy I've known for a while, his name's Jay Bergman. He came up to me, congratulated us on the pop on the uh, pop show. 
<laughs> on the podcast as he follows it uh weekly oh so nice pretty, yeah it's pretty cool so jay bergie bergman or bergie as everybody calls him thanks for uh listening right on that's awesome yeah and yeah might as well give a shout out to uh garrow too man yeah we uh we have a thing like an inside <laughs> joke between him him and i and like yeah. Uh, a guy goes on social media. We won't mention his name, but his name is uh, Bruce Henry. <laughs> and uh, he goes like on Facebook and he'll post a picture, like a selfie on him. Like then, then he'll put like, like, like throw, throwback Thursday. And even though the picture was just taken on a Tuesday, <laughs> then he goes hashtag, uh, Anishinaabe or hashtag Ojibwe hashtag brown eyes. So every time I see Luke, I we call each other brown eyes. Like even Dustin <laughs> McLeod oh, gets, yeah, yeah. gets in on the joke. <laughs> like I call Garrow brown eyes, even though he has blue eyes, but we just we just make in front of Brucey there. All these ha- <laughs> hashtags taking uh pictures of himself and post them on Facebook. So pretty funny. Um <laughs> I got two shoutouts. Uh, one to uh, former guest of the show, Devin Buffalo. Oh yeah, our uh, AKA gonna, Mr. Pink. He's gonna get the call to the bar soon. <laughs> he is. He just yeah. graduated law school from the University of Alberta, which is a big accomplishment, and uh, we're super proud and super happy for him. Yeah. And he put a lot of work in obtaining his law degree, yeah. and it, it's no easy feat. I mean. Um, it's a lot of hard work and dedication, and it just goes to show you that um, a lot of hard work on and off the ice. And like he went to junior hockey and he played uh, Division One at Dartmouth College, and he played a little bit of pro, but he played a lot of res tourneys and senior hockey while going to school. And it's just to show you how uh, how hockey and education can go hand in hand. So congrats, Dev, and I told him. Uh, We'll do a Selly next yeah. year at you know where. <laughs> he just laughs. He says, "Done deal." So <laughs> it was good. Uh, we uh, we interviewed Dev at the Freddy this past yeah this past May, and it's always good to see him. It's it's uh he's one of the guys that we could call a friend, and I think like I mentioned on Facebook. Uh, this is that's the cool thing about this show is that a lot of our former guests that we had on the show when we now call friends and we just when we get the opportunity we can go hang out with them and yeah have a couple uh coffees coffees and soda pops and go out for a meal and stuff like that just yeah. like you you uh met up with former guest harlan at the at the bp in at kenora BP, yeah. so it's cool yeah well he was in a Wapsimung was holding a youth conference, so there was a couple keynote speakers. And uh, then he messaged me. He goes, yo, bro, you in Kenara? I said, yeah. Well, I'm going to eat a BP. Or he wants to watch the game, so I mentioned BP. I'll be there in like 10 minutes. So I met him there for, uh, he had, what do you have? I think he had lasagna. No, he didn't have, maybe he had lasagna. I know I had my medium deluxe pizza, though. What's a medium uh, deluxe? That's just like green peppers, mushrooms, cheese and pepperoni. Ham as well. Ham. Yeah. I'm not a big guy like when it comes to pasta dishes on mm. like um restaurants like that, like Olive Garden or Boston Pizza or it's like those chain restaurants. I if you want to have a really good uh Italian dish, you might as well make it legit. Yeah. Fresh pasta is what I'm saying. But <clears throat> Uh, what else is good at Boston Pizza? I like uh, the pierogi pizza. I've never tried it yet. No, no. Uh, when we went to Edmonton, like last month, Paula and I ordered a pierogi pizza, and now uh, they put cheddar cheese on top, and they usually melt it. And but with us at the Boston Pizza we went to, they just put uh, cheddar cheese on top, and they didn't, they didn't uh, no. melt it. Huh. Then we asked. The waiter, like, can you take this back, please? Um, the cheese is not melted. And she, the waiter said, oh, that's how, how we make it. It's like, no, it's not. We ordered pierogi pizza lots. And the yeah. cheese is always melted. So that's uh, that was our beef with the mm. Boston pizza in Edmonton. One of it. One in Edmonton. But 
Uh, another shout out goes out to Owen. Owen Hedrick of Garden River yes. First Nation. Owen recently signed with the Nern Nuremberg. I'm probably saying that wrong. <laughs> Ice, Ice Tigers of the German Elite League. Uh, D E L. How do you say that D word in like German? Is it douche? Douche. 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 I should. I should know. I can't remember. Um, I don't know how to say it. Douche. D e u t s h c h e. I think you have to pronounce the T. Douche. 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 Yeah, Dutch. I don't know. It's a douche. Because the because the German language it's it's hard consonant sounding. It's hard syllable sounding. So Dutche. Dutche. Yeah, something like that. Dutche. I think. Yeah. Something like that. I think. Yeah. Actually, I went online. Speaking of German, um, I went online and I found out who the first Eiserhoff was that came over to North America. And he was a German soldier fighting for Britain in the American Revolution. Oh. So that was pretty cool. So Nice. A little bit nice. of ancestry, yeah. Ancestry. So that was com. like in 1700s. Holy. So it just shows, just makes you think how cool it is that his son married a Cree woman. And the name just came down like each generation. Yeah. So over 300 years, that her last name is still going i guess it's going strong i guess well with my yeah. brother and having a bunch of kids it's going strong <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's just it's cool cool family history i found out so but the thing i was looking for for my last name was to see if there was any eiserhaus that fought in world war ii for germany but i couldn't find anything on it oh i mean if there's eiserhaus still in germany right i wonder if they were fighting in the second world war it'd be fun it'd be cool to find out Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to do it, but not pay for that. Uh, oh like yeah, all those pay sites like so cheap. I don't like paying for crap like that. So <laughs> yeah. But anyways, yeah. Owen signed to play in Germany. It's a 14 team league, and it's uh, I think they say it's one of the best leagues other than the KHL in Europe. So nice. And it's good for him because he's such a offensive, smart defenseman. He he loves skating. He's good at skating, and it's a bigger ice over there, as you and I know. It's uh, <laughs> that Olympic size ice is huge. So Owen's it gonna is. really uh, succeed and excel in Germany. So good luck to him with his one year uh, contract. Might as well. He's what twenty five, twenty yeah. six. He might as well go travel the world and absolutely. Because I know when Shags played. He played in Europe. He said he like on his days off, he could him and his family could just go on train rides and like an hour later you're in a totally different country and sightsee yeah. and go on the train back to your to a different country. That'd be cool. I think that's probably one on my bucket list is just like uh travel to different countries watching hockey leagues, mm-hmm. different teams and stuff. Cause that European hockey is totally different from fan base, right? You yep. see them standing up and Oh, there's like, man. there's it's like, a, it's, it's an totally entirely different, eh? different culture, man. When we were in Sweden, <clears throat> the Swedish fans, they kind of, they set the bar so high for themselves for cheering and they have their chance. And it's not just a let's go Sweden, let's go. No, it's a whole chorus. It's a whole like song and it's pretty, it's pretty neat. So they, there's probably like hundreds, like a hundred super fan goos and absolutely. Pizzeria. Yeah. There's a, there's at least a, 20 or 30 super fan magoos there <laughs> in each. Yeah, it's great. Uh, speaking of uh, super fan magoo, we'll talk about the Edmonton Oilers in the Stanley Cup finals. Yeah, uh, yeah, we will. Florida Panthers are still up three games to three games of two on the Oilers. Um, what'd you think of the game last night? Game, game five. Uh, I was obviously nervous because they were in Florida facing elimination, but they found a way to, to claw, scratch, fight, dive and dodge what is it the five d's dodge dive dip deek dangle yeah because connor mcjesus connor mcdangle uh, <laughs> through i know you see that the, yeah the yeah 
three players. I think uh, your your uh, number two defenseman there, uh, the Bush bomb. Yep. He assisted on McDavid's. Uh, I mean Corey Perry's goal, eh? Yeah. Did you see that? He was just standing by the boards, and McDavid curled and picked up speed, <laughs> and he just gave him the puck. It was like a two foot pass, and McDavid <laughs> did the rest. That reminds me of all Paul Zajerald made that draw pass in, yeah. in Eveleth a couple of years ago. <laughs> if you ask him about it, he'll still talk about it. He'll still <laughs> still talk about it like as if he did it the night yeah. before. <laughs> but just to think how sharp McDavid skates is it, right? Like, do you yeah. see on his edges? I mean, like us, place. like us old timers, like native players, we really don't care if our skates are sharp like that or no. Like I, I don't even. I maybe sharpen my skates once. Once a year. That's before I go to uh, the States in November. But other than that, I use just that cheap file from Canadian Tire. (laughs) Just imagine if an NHL player didn't sharpen their skates maybe once a year and how different their game would be. Especially like a McDavid. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Skinner's playing good. Mm -hmm. Bobrovsky, his confidence is shot. Skinner's he's playing more square to the puck now. He I is, that. yeah. Like I don't know, I just put Jack Campbell in. Okay, <laughs> put their uh, five million dollar goalie in there. <clears throat> yeah, McDavid is five points away from beating Gretzky's record. Ooh. Do you think he's gonna beat it? If it goes to seven, then yeah, he's got a he's got a good chance. Even even uh, Bouchard, he's only seven points back of coffee. Yeah. Like where'd that come that you said like a month ago? Like how the hell did that happen? No like, kidding. All of a sudden you look at the score, the leaderboard, he's up there. Like, wow, how is he getting? <laughs> Bouchard. I don't know. I'm still not sold on him. I mean, ever <laughs> since we saw him that one year, yeah. I've seen him in Winnipeg play. <laughs> but give him props props though. He's uh what third in playoff scoring. Yeah. So do you think they will win Friday night yeah. in Edmonton? I think they will. I think, I don't know. I want to say there's Florida's done. They're just not playing like they did the first three games. The first, no. Like something happened. It's like, like, it's like I don't know. Kachuk guaranteed game five win and they didn't. Nice try, Mark Messier. Yeah. No one predicts a game like I mean Mark Messier did, but Mark Messier did score a hat trick in that game though. He did, yeah. The only thing that Chuck did was save the puck going in that empty net. But did they ended up the re- scoring anyways. Did you see how Oliver um just totally gave up on the play? Yeah. Oh man. That's brutal. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they have the momentum going and who's the pressure gonna be? Which team's gonna have the most pressure? On game six, is it going to be Edmonton because they're at home or no. Florida because they're up three I games to two? I, it's Florida. They have all the pressure on them. They have to close it. They have so much pressure to close it. Like it's all on them. And Edmonton, they're just, just they have no pressure on them. So that's did you look at playing. game? Did you look at tickets uh, for game six? No. I was looking this morning at Ticketmaster. Don't tell me. That's Teens. expensive. High teens, like for the upper deck, it's like twenty two hundred. That was like oh. the cheapest one I found. Jeez. It's like you're almost touching the roof. You're almost touching the ceiling. <laughs> you might Man. as well just watch the jumbo trying to get a bigger picture of the the players. <laughs> See, I know. So, <laughs> I don't know. Would you go if you if you had the funds and if you were on chief and council, would you go to <laughs> game six? <laughs> Stephen Council, of course. You gotta have think, a meeting somewhere. <laughs> do you think there's really uh chief and council that go to like hockey games like that? Like especially being in Edmonton and a lot of like out uh, west, there's a lot of Edmonton over fans and like there's gotta be some shady deals. So I, I would say yeah, I put my money at that there would chief and council go there or or, or just chief and it's yeah, chief and council. Yeah, because what two grand is maybe half a check for them. Yeah, because I my mom told me how much the chief makes. I guess 
I could say it now. I kind of gave it away, but the chief for Moose Cree work uh, makes, and it, it's a lot of money. It's like, holy yeah. geez, <laughs> that yeah. chief could afford it. Like, mm -hmm. But my mom told me, or my granny told me a long time ago, when my grandpa was chief of Moose Factory in the 70s, they never yeah. got, chiefs never got, or chief and council never got paid. It was like oh. just an extra job. Like my grandpa had a job. He worked at the hospital. Yeah. Then like his side job was being chief of the community. Just imagine if it was like that in today's uh, today's world. The chiefs and council never got paid. Get paid. Well, I know a lot of. I don't know why we're. I'm digging myself in a hole here, but I am. <laughs> but I know there's a lot of council that they have jobs and they don't. Their full time job is not being a council. Mm -hmm. you know council and i'm just i'm stopping right there before i okay. dig myself a bigger hole and start <laughs> saying talking politics and shit like that but we're a show that we don't like talking politics it's not who we are and really don't give a damn but uh speaking of council i guess we're just going to talk about council again <laughs> let's uh, go back to that meme yeah holy man. our friend our good friend reno cameron uh who sits on council uh out of the Saskatchewan First Nation, which is just north of Kenora, uh, which is, well, we call it Dolls. Yeah. Um, I made a meme of him sitting on a jet plane. <laughs> um, it's not a real picture. I got his head from a different picture, and I just cropped it on a some random guy sitting on the jet. And I said about how he, all of a sudden Chief and Council have meetings in Edmonton during games three and four. And uh, it was shared lots like over yeah. 450 times, and it was like over 150 people, 150,000 people saw the post, and and he was getting messages, and people were talking to him about asking him why he went to the game three and four and stuff, and they took it serious. Yeah, like why do people take memes that are especially on social media yeah. so serious? Well, you can clearly tell it's a cropped face. <laughs> like it was, it was pretty good, though. It was like you're getting good. That's probably why better. people thought it was real. But yeah, I guess yeah, I guess it. Yeah, really stand up for himself in one of the meetings. He's like, "Okay, we're here in Kenora. I'm at six thirty. There's no way I can make it to Edmonton tonight for seven. <laughs> like he's just. You just have to really stand up. But I mean, come on, guys, like. There's a one Facebook group that just bashed, just horribly know, right? bashed, bashed the situation. Yeah. I I went like that page I showed you. I can't remember the Facebook yeah. page, but it's like people is it's, this is on Facebook. It's a joke. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand why people take that, like take it up the butt and just get all offended. Yeah. And like, People, the chief and council shouldn't be spending money on this like, and that. No. I was like, geez, it's a joke. But over, like, everything we make is a joke. Like, we're, yeah. we're, we like to make people laugh. We love to laugh ourselves. So, whatever we, we do, like, when we make memes, they're jokes. Like, yeah. the, so don't take it serious. Um, just laugh with us, <laughs> laugh at us, laugh with us. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's nothing. Uh, we're not serious, but so um, Reno's a good guy. He's uh, he laughed about it, which is good because I know some people get butt hurt and get offended. But that's why we I I made the meme of Reno because he's a he can mm -hmm. take the joke and he knows that we're joking. And it's funny that my mom sent me that his TikTok video. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this today and he goes. Did you watch this? I was like, yeah, that's my buddy Reno. <laughs> so it's funny. <laughs> but yeah, just laugh, people. Um, it's it's good to laugh. Laughter is medicine, as they yeah. always say. Um, so it was nothing serious. And I'm, we're not gonna apologize for it because it it was funny. Like it was funny, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> as if like if if a chief, if your chief and council does that. Takes a private jet to Edmonton and spends foolishly on band funds, then he's an idiot, and that's he shouldn't be yeah. uh, representing you and your community. But that's all we're gonna say about council yes, and chief and council and politics and 
all that other stuff. So, um, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, one more thing I want to talk about before yes. we go to our interview with Lucas. <clears throat> um, we're on YouTube. Like, this will be on YouTube. Um, yeah. Bush and I are recording right now. I can see Bush in my camera. Yeah. Um, people were talking like. Uh, we're asking, can you please make put this on YouTube, make a video of you of the show? So we've I've learned how to do it. It was it was uh it was pretty hard to learn how to like edit this and put it together mm -hmm. and put the show together. So we need more uh YouTube views because uh my grandson was over last week, SJ, and I told him, Yeah, uh he because he watches YouTube like all the yeah. all the kids, they just love YouTube and all the content that's on YouTube. So I told him, yeah, we're on YouTube and Bush and I uh, have our own show. And so he, he goes, uh, he looked it up and he goes, ha ha. I was like, what? You guys only have 200 views or a hundred oh. views. You guys got, you guys suck. Oh no. Damn. And my Ooh. grandson SJ is only nine. So he's just, and he's <laughs> well, all these, all these kids are smart nowadays. So, he was just rotting us for not having like, <laughs> lots of views. Awesome. So I just, just, I had no comeback. I did. Just, I just, I just got chirped by the I, grad son. <laughs> I know. I get chirped by a nine year old for how many views we have on YouTube. So <laughs> pick, so uh, like and subscribe to our channel. Turn that bell on for the not notifications. Yep. So we need more views so we don't get chirped by a nine year old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one more thing. Uh, there's a guy called, I've been watching him. I don't know why I watch this guy. His name's Vegas Matt. Vegas and, Matt. And all he, it's like an older guy. Um, he goes to casinos and he just plays slot machines. Really? Like he'll put like 10 grand in machines and just, and there's a lot of time he loses. Like this guy will lose 10, 5, 10 grand on slot machines. And, and this guy, like if you, Posts a video today, he'll have like freaking a hundred thousand views, and all he does is play stupid slots. It's are you searching him right now? What's it called? Vegas Matt. Vegas Matt. See if I oh, M A T T. Too. Like I've watched him a couple of times because just I think I just watch it to see if he's gonna hit any. Uh, any was it specials or no not specials but uh progressive progressives i guess yeah bonuses that's the word oh. if he, dc see him on vegas matt yeah they're an older looking gentleman yeah he looks like he's your age <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's got a bunch of stuff we're not going to promote gambling though but yeah no but jeez i don't know how I, he started out he was on my uh algorithm for you when i was watching oh. youtube and watch see how many views he has on his like hundred yeah 300 289k 321k views oh, wow that's crazy that's and all he does is just play slots yeah. <clears throat> jeez and here we are struggling at 100 views <laughs> getting churned by a nine-year-old yeah so so like and subscribe like like i said to our youtube <laughs> channel how freaking deadly would that be to get like hundred thousand views? Like, oh man, that'd be sweet. <laughs> I guess uh, we gotta be patient. One yeah. day, one day. So one day, one day we'll get. One day, maybe we gotta go play a quick twenty at uh, Olympic <laughs> or somewhere. Regent, <laughs> yeah, Regent or McPhillips. Yeah, but um, yeah, let's. Uh, with that being said, we'll get there eventually. Yeah. <laughs> We're uh, we're just a turtle in the race. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, like that. Remember that old Disney cartoon when the rabbit and the turtle would race. Oh yeah, and the the rabbit would just go really fast and come back to check on the turtle and run around the turtle and the turtle's yeah. just going slow, slow but consistent. We're yeah. a turtle. Yeah, we'll get, so we're we'll, slow and consistent, but we'll, we'll get, get there. there. So let's uh, head over to our interview with Luke Lucas. Let's go. So I will forego my usual high introduction as I am introducing our guest, Res Podcasts listeners, fellow cousins, 
What's that? You got it wrong. I said rest hockey. Oh no, I no, didn't. you said Ross rest <laughs> podcast. <laughs> You, you gotta keep you gotta going, keep going. You, you, gotta, you gotta edit that. So, anyways, before I was really interrupted and corrected by my esteemed colleague Trev Iserhoff. Yeah, this is episode <laughs> 120 of the Res Hockey Podcast, and we are really happy and proud to introduce our guest, Lucas Sisequis of Beardies and Okamasis First Nation. How you doing, Lucas? I'm good. I'm still on cloud nine here, with the, <laughs> and uh, I'm just happy to be on the show. Why are you in cloud nine? <laughs> oh man, you know why? Because we were on the we were on the brinks of elimination there. Yeah, yeah. Still, still. Have you, Trevor? <laughs> have you noticed the record after Edmonton goes 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 after Edmonton loses three yeah. games in a row? Yeah. Are, you, they're on, they're on are beat, you aware? Right? They're what are they sixteen and 0, 5 and zero, and then eight, eight and zero. zero. Yeah. See the so bush bomb. Did you see the bush bomb tonight? Well, of course I did. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did too. Yeah, a crappy shot. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, Oilers won another game. Do you think they're going to come back and win the Stanley Cup? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's gonna go to Game Seven for yep. sure. A win on home ice, especially with all that, all that freaking scoring power they have there. <laughs> yeah, this is hurting my ears. Like, I just want to <laughs> exit this interview. <laughs> Got two other fans just talking crap, but uh, yeah, they're playing good and. It's. I think it's if the lead if uh, the, the you said Leafs. have former three lead. <laughs> Three lead players, or the uh, Oilers would be totally done. They here got we go, Cody Lucas. CC, uh, Connor Brown, and Hyman. No, they learned everything oh, playing for the Leafs, and now <laughs> playing for the Oilers. So. <laughs> but so. you know what? Honestly, if the Oilers do end up losing, uh, I can't be bitter about it because at least um, there'll be a fellow native boy holding the cup again. So I'd be happy for Brandon Montour if he, yeah, if they end up beating the Oilers. That's true. It's always good to for the, for uh, the second year in a row too, eh? Yeah, yeah. It'll be a second year, second year in a row. The cup will be going to a res, but Six Nations is a big res. It's like over ten thousand people. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. We we talked about that. Like, um, we actually played Six Nations probably like three times now at the Freddy, and I think the one time one of the boys mentioned that yeah, their population is like over ten thousand. They have a lot of guys to pick out of. It's pretty cool. They're such a strong hockey team. Do you think it's fair though to compare to Six Nations when they and they get the same amount of imports when they play like small communities like yours when you guys have to have four imports as well? I think it's fair. It's it's I don't know. You can't. They can't really like choose. Like it, it's like um. How do I say it? Like it's not their fault their reserve has such a big population. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's and true. It's not our fault that we don't have a big population. But I think it's still fair. It's it is what it is. True, that's that's true. Uh yeah, they had a really good uh team at the Freddy. Unfortunately they lost at the, in the finals. Did you guys play against them this year? I can't remember. No, not this year. So yeah, they're they're they always have a good squad. Um, yeah. let's uh let's go back to your minor hockey days. Uh, your I guess they call it U eighteen now, but back in our day it was called midget. Uh, you played for uh, the Beaters Blackhawks, which was a really uh successful AAA midget uh organization. What can you tell us about the Blackhawks and your playing days, playing for yeah. the Blackhawks? Those were some of the freaking best times of my life man it was it was awesome uh being able to play at a high caliber um midget triple a right at, right at home like two minutes from the rink so you got basically you get a monday off and then you got practice every day so i go i went to school right in duck lake which is the town for our reserve which is basically five minutes down the highway as well 
So you drive from school over to practice 10 minutes after practice, you drive home, you're already home within five minutes and you got all your family, all your close friends. And, and yeah, the franchise, that was awesome. Being like um, the only first nation franchise in the league. That was awesome. Um, Growing up, I always watched games and seeing that there would be a handful or at least half of the roster would be First Nation. I thought that was so cool. Um, What else? It kind of sucked, too. Um, The last year, they took the franchise away. I think the last year was 2019, 2020. It really... um, to, to put a dent on the reserve, I guess, like um, for sports wise, it brought out the community a lot, like a lot of fans, family. Um, and it also brought like non first nations players and first nations players together. And like, we would have team feasts. We would smudge um, during games and stuff like that. And you'd have like the non first nations players joining in and, some of those guys never um, seen stuff like that, like our, our cultural ways. And, you know, it was just really cool to be a part of. And yeah, it, was just, it was great. It was awesome. Did Saskatchewan Hockey, um, which governors all minor hockey in Saskatchewan, did, did they ever say why there was, like, they stopped, like the Blackhawks weren't allowed in the Midget AAA League? I'm pretty sure it had to do something with um schooling. Um, they wanted more of their players that are on the roster to go to school, um, on community or like even in Duck Lake. And I'm pretty sure I don't think they could have. Like a lot of people, a lot of players didn't really want to uh, billet on reserve, or um, in Duck Lake, I guess. Pretty sure it had to do something with like schooling and who knows. I can't really, can't really say like wh- why you know, but yeah, it's very unfortunate. It sucked. It was very um, it was a sad day. I guess that back in uh, I think that was twenty twenty their final game. Yeah, uh, that also that actually hits close to home here in Kenora because our Triple A midget team was almost. Ex- not expelled, but they weren't going to be included in the Manitoba AAA league. You remember that, Trevor? There's talks yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, the reasoning was the 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 higher ups they didn't want Winnipeg teams to travel to Kenora, but okay, that's fine. And Danny, but that would affect all the all the First Nations here. Like there we got Kenora, we got Dryden, we got Red Lake, we got Fort Francis, and then we got Eagle Lake. Like there's a lot of First Nations players that that are good enough to play that that want to have the exposure and uh, there was a, there, there was a lot of tense moments for about two three months eh yeah like, there was yeah and uh ultimately they decided that uh Kenora triple a midget would compete in the in the Manitoba triple a midget which is which is a good thing like but again like there's a lot of first nations players that want to play but they almost didn't get a chance to play last year so so we kind of knew what we were going what you were going through right now but so we just a little yeah. did and- that. Like, uh, the team actually it went over to Warman, the okay, yeah, city of Warman now, just outside of Saskatoon. And I'm pretty sure there is a native boy on there, he's from uh, Ochapois. And like, uh, you don't really want to say it, but like, now that the native team is gone, I'm you don't really see too, too much native boys playing in the league, like, there yeah. is kind of scattered. It was better, you know, just to see them all on one team playing with each other. You know, it makes it more comfortable even in the dressing room. Oh, for sure it does, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, I even seen um, they were trying to take away uh, the Norman, Norman AAA. I forget what their team was called. I think it North was Stars. The- yeah. Yeah. They were trying to take them out of the league as well or something, eh, because of the travel. Yeah. yeah, up in Thompson, Manitoba, which is maybe what Bush, how, how far? Eight hours. It's from a good. Winnipeg? It's a good six and a half. Uh, yeah, seven and a half, eight hour drive. Yeah, that's that's tough. See, that would take away some roster spots mm-hmm. for, for native boys, Métis boys that are living in the northern Manitoba, and 
Yeah, it definitely like some of the boys, like even Waylon Gardipi, for for instance, uh, he grew up um, watching the Midget AAA, and the um, they would pick a, a young player to go out and skate during warmups, and he would do that all the time. And you know, he he's growing up thinking like, yeah, I'm gonna play for the Beers AAA, and then it just gets ripped out of our hands, you know, for mm-hmm. not only him but like all the other young up and coming players um, from beardies or from surrounding reserves you know and kind of kind of sucks and then now they gotta go elsewhere speaking of the young guys that played on the blackhawks uh whalen was a part of your team and he was what selected second overall in the sj draft like how how yeah. good are your up and coming kids that are coming through the ranks from beardies Man, Waylon's gonna be something else. Like he's he just finished playing in some sort of uh combine tournament in Calgary and I think he finished like twenty eight points or something like that with his line mates in like six games or something like that. But yeah, he's he's really good. Man, I watched him there was another boy on our team with the cage, he's a defenseman, that's his cousin Lawson Lawson Gardipi. Um I watched those two boys all the way from like novice man because uh i had a nephew that played on the same team as him he doesn't really play hockey anymore to this day but back then um, my little nephew brant i would follow them around going around to tournaments and watching whalen and lawson just in and out of players you know <laughs> and then now now they're starting out playing tournaments with us man. this makes <laughs> you feel like an old vet <laughs> 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 but yeah those kids are awesome Hundred percent going somewhere. That that kid is a beast in the in the gym. Uh, Whalen, both both uh, athletes. They also play soccer for our. Uh, we're in, we're also a big soccer is there. Oh, wow. they, oh, they play play a lot of that and yeah. There's some other boys too that are coming. We're gonna be a mixture of some young and little bit of old and uh, as a little bit of old i want to say me <laughs> <laughs> um the willow willow creek chiefs what can you tell us about that because like out here in ontario we like didn't hear much about you guys and like uh unfortunately like all we heard was like round lake bears which is they're a really good team and a really good organization but we like from coming from ontario we barely heard heard about the the chiefs so what can you tell us about the chiefs um well that all started in warman actually um we were the warman wildcats and we had our uh, team play out of there um there was probably about a good eight eight of us native boys that were playing in warman um i think five of us were from beardies um we ended up winning the league there we play out of the twin rivers hockey league we won the league there played the next season didn't do so well um warman's a growing city um so their minor hockey system was like just jam-packed like right from novice well what, what do you call it now like U U nine or yeah U seven yeah all the way up there was like two three teams in like each division you know so they only had two rinks in warman so getting ice time was very very limited so our senior team from warman started <laughs> playing games out of beardies we started renting the ice and beardies because there was like five of us from beardies playing there and it was just easy and it's the only place we could get ice. So um, with that being said, we finished off that season with the warm and wildcats and um, my good buddy, his name is Taylor Watts. Um, he's a coach. Well, was the coach of Warman. Um, so we finished off that season. We kind of sat down and decided like, um, should we do another season here in Warman? Like, cause we're, we're fighting, finding ice time. And basically the city of Warman told us there's no room for you guys. We can't really fit you guys in anywhere. You're going to have to go elsewhere. So right there, 
we decided let's go to Beardy's. Let's move the whole franchise to Beardy's. So what we did was I set up a meeting with um, one of our counselors from the reserve um, with Taylor Watts and his wife. So we sat down. We literally just met in the lobby of the rink in Beardy's. <laughs> Quick meeting. Um, we did the proposal, I guess, and then our counselor brought it to the table with the rest of the uh, counselors and the chief and they voted on it and they thought it would be a great idea to bring, bring in a senior hockey organization because we lost the triple a, we lost the double a system and there was just no hockey going on in beardies. And it's basically a, our reserve was just screaming for some sort of entertainment. And we brought in the senior hockey team. So <clears throat> We decided on some names and what we could do. I think we brought up the Willow Creek Chiefs, um, the Beardies Bruins. We couldn't do Beardies Blackhawks because there's already um, a team in the league called the Blackhawks. They're called uh, Birch Hills Blackhawks. So we have to do elsewhere. And there's also, um, we're called um, the Willow Cree, basically. like uh, We're land of the Willow Cree. So we basically kind of brought up, we came up with the Willow Creek Chiefs. It's, it's actually like an old team. I was told that years ago there used to be a team called the Willow Creek Chiefs. So we thought, uh, let's go with it. That's There's a ring to it. It sounds nice. It's good. And, um, So we went to that. And, yeah, we ordered our jerseys and everything. We actually um, had to pay a buddy to uh, create our logo. Um, everybody loves our logo, man. It's just such a sweet logo. Our jerseys are nice. And uh, yeah, we went from there and we had a kind of a little tryout. We brought in some players. Um, and you know, I, I, I know everybody like this. I know everybody from every team, BBCN, Pachinac, Red Pheasant, you know, you know, everyone. So I just contacted a lot of the guys and see if they wanted to come out and play for Willow Creek Chiefs. And, the first season we did really well. We actually, I think, what did we go? I think we went like sixteen and or no, fifteen and one. We lost one game in the season and then went into playoffs. We had a, a two game lead, blew that. That was <laughs> Delmany or no no no. Yeah, it was against Delmany and the uh, uh, chance Adrian. He was on there. And we they beat us in a three game sweep, and then uh, last season as well we had another great season. We got guys like Trent Campbell, Kirk Bear, um, Aaron Gray Eyes, his brother Jordan, Riley Albert, um, Dusty Iron from Canoe Lake. We got guys from all over the place. Darwin Morin from PBCN. Um, Goal, one of our goalies is from Stanley Mission, LaRange. So it's it's really great having a all native senior hockey team play in uh in um I guess uh, a Munya league. And yeah, it's it's awesome. We definitely make noise. We we had a good season again this past season. We finished first again, and then again we actually <laughs> we got the re reverse sweep on us we went up to nothing in the semis against rostern and we actually went down like eight or nine guys to tell you the truth and half of them were injuries the other half were guys that had to leave to work so it was really tough we played like the last three games with like two lines it was pretty crazy and yeah it's it's awesome man having the team in the in the reserve as well the fans are nuts they're, they're like they pack they jam pack away rinks we have oh, more wow. fans than the than the home the home team so yeah it's it's awesome we got a light show man all the kids they they pack our dressing room when we walk out they're all fist pumping us it's it's really awesome we definitely awoke hockey again in our community that's awesome um if you're ever looking for an ap player an affiliate player you should give bush a Give him a call. <laughs> I think that when we enter provincials, we'll have to give a, a ring. 
<laughs> you heard of the bush bomb? Oh, yeah. we, uh, bush has a shot called the bush bomb. <laughs> the bush. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. I mean, to play with, uh, to be able to play at you know, like your home community with like a bunch of guys you play with and against. I mean, that's what yeah. hockey is all about, right? That's awesome. I wish Ontario would have something like that. The way. Yeah. The hockey structured in Saskatchewan. I mean, like how you guys have senior provincials and you guys got FSIN. Did I say that? What yeah. right? F- yeah. Yeah. F-S-I-N. So yeah, you guys are doing it the right way compared to like Ontario and stuff like that. Cause we have nothing structured or nothing organized over no. here. And so I mean, that's why we you we see like tournaments at the Freddie or like Prince Albert. At the Sense Cup, like a lot of Saskatchewan teams are so successful because the structure you, you guys have playing in these leagues and stuff like that. I don't know. Ontario has to catch up to you guys because you guys are you guys are doing like such a good job with that. We're yeah. so far behind. Like it's yeah. it's unbelievable. Like like with Eagle Lake about an hour and, a, hour and a bit away from us, but they can't compete anywhere unless they go to tournaments. Like there's no senior men's league anywhere, and unless you go down to Whitby, Ontario, or even then, that's almost uh, 20, 20 hours a year, away. Right? Yeah, like 20 hours, like a 20 hour drive. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, and like you guys mentioned, the uh, Round Lake Bears as well. Like, um, I know that they've been trying to get into leagues for the past how many years, and they, the, the team, like the, the leagues just won't let them in. Like, we don't understand why. Like, look at all the success that they just had in provincials and, them packing the mm. rinks and just putting on such good hockey against all those those good uh, hockey clubs that they played against and I just don't see like why like how yeah. come they can't get put in the yeah. league and same with us like I forgot to mention like our Beardies Blackhawks team we put in multiple proposals to get into that same league that we're in now and we got shut down. They would not let our Beardies team into the league because they say that we'll choose tournaments over league games and whatnot. But that's that's far gone. That's long gone. Like we we definitely choose league over tournaments, or we could choose like what tournament to go to, you know, and not interfere with league games and stuff. And yeah, the only possible way that we got accepted into the league was if the Warman franchise came over to Beardies, which kind of sucks, but at least, you know, we're, we're still in there. We're, we're being successful the past two seasons besides in the second round of playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the Leafs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, second round. Yeah, I know. The second round, I was going to say that. We never, whoa, whoa, whoa. We, never we never made it past the second slow round. A yeah, bit. slow down over there. <laughs> Um, you guys played in the Freddy. Uh, the Blackhawks played in the Freddy this past year. Uh, you guys, you guys did pretty well. Um, how was it playing in the Freddy? Man, that that tournament just takes the cake away, man. That's the best tournament to play in. There's so much hype before it, and it's just a awesome tournament, you know, to see all the the talent on every team, all the native talent, like it's. It's crazy to see, you know, like there's so many players, so many native players in the WHL. There's so many native players and and um, semi pro with with it being like um, East Coast or uh, the Southern Professional League or AHL. It's it's awesome to play in a tournament like that and able to play against players that play in leagues like that. So it's, your 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 first year ever playing in the Friday, like were you just did you just live in the moment or did you were like, holy crap, this is it. Like I'm, I'm in the Freddy and like there's uh, black water there, <laughs> you know, like what was uh, going on through your uh, mind? No, really. You know, it's just uh, for me, it's you know, like, I, I, I get pumped up, you know, but it, you know, it's just like another hockey tournament playing against all these, all these big name players and whatnot. And just cause I've been playing in the Freddy tournament ever since it was just uh, the Saskatchewan teams. I think, um, man, I can't even go back. I, I think it'd be like 2018 or 2019 or something like that. It it kind of started opening up to to um, out of province teams. I remember. I think it's it's got to be like 2019 or something like that. 
where it was just the Saskatchewan teams, and we actually ended up taking third. I think we lost in a overtime game. I think it was to Red Pheasant or Canoe Lake, either or, because it was Canoe Lake and Red Pheasant in the final. And Red Pheasant went on to win. That's when they had Nathan Bruer and um, I think Jesse Duda is playing. It was mm-hmm. a little but oh. now, yeah, play. You know, you just take it all in, especially when you play against all these big name players, and you, just, you know, they put their hockey pants on the same way as everybody else. You just <laughs> gotta do your job. That's yeah, it's great. I love it. I I'm already looking forward to next year. To so your you're saying there's a chance. Yeah, <laughs> start training right now, Bush. Like uh, yeah. Happy Gilmore, <laughs> batting cages tomorrow, six oh, o'clock. That hurts, but it feels so good. <laughs> the the Blackhawks picked up uh, two imports from Ontario, the Giroux brothers. Uh, how how did they play with you guys? Man, those two are uh, there's something else. They're a little they're just speedsters, man. They're they're skillful. Um, playing with them was was something else. Like you know, playing on the same line is what I mean. Uh, you just gotta give them the puck. Got a head man, the puck to them. They're so quick, and uh, just basically do do my job, do the simple things, and yeah, just get open. <laughs> Play, playing with them was is crazy, you know. Like they're so fast, and um, Zach actually asked me, he's like, "How old are you?" And I told him, "I'm 31." He didn't believe me. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, they're they're awesome hockey players, man. Damien is. Like he's just go go go. There's no no stopping that guy. I think he said he got home on Tuesday from his season. Yeah, uh, and he said, yeah, he talked to Zach, and they were just fl- <laughs> flying out like a couple of days later. So it was, yeah. it was uh, when it I was, was chat- when I was chatting with Zach, he was like, because. I didn't really know that he had a brother there. And he's just like, yeah, I have a, I have an older brother. He plays in the pro, uh, professional league. He's up and down the NHL and I searched his name and I was like, wow, let's, let's get him over here. And we actually had to wait, I think like a week cause he was still in the playoffs and, um, he had, I think a game on like a Friday and they lost that game. And Zachary texted me late that night and he was like, uh, um, good news and some bad news. Uh, they they lost, but now that he can come and play, and basically he said, "Let me talk to him in the next couple of days." And um, he texted me, and he's like, "We're in." I'm like, wow, that's <laughs> cool. So we have to get all of our money in order and book some flights. And yeah, he's he was uh, at first um, they wanted to fly from Sudbury because of. Um, Damien doing that long drive because they didn't yeah. want to drive all, all the way to Sudbury and then Sudbury back to Toronto. So I was like, oh, I was looking at the flights from Sudbury and man, <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of hefty on the on the pocket there. So it, they they told me that their dad had a meeting or something in uh, Toronto, so it kind of all worked out. Boom, they're right back to Saskatchewan. <laughs> Picked them up at like midnight. Only dropped them off at their hotel probably at like one o'clock, and then we already played the next day at twelve against uh, Canoe Lake, so I was already picking them up like around ten. And yeah, it was, the game against Canoe Lake. Oh man, they're they're such a good team as well, and they just came out strong. And I ended up getting into like a little tussle, and emotions got high there, and ended up getting kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> it has. It was great. It was awesome. Great tournament. We were uh, calling you Mike McDonald because when you were skating out there, your your back of your jersey was just flopping there. So I was like, hey, there's uh, Mike McDonald there coming on the wing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Even my flow. <laughs> yeah, true, eh? <laughs> but um, – like what other tournaments did the Blackhawks play in? Like, did you guys play like FS and IN stuff like that? And uh, yeah, we didn't really play in too much. There's um, 
the Christmas tournament happens every year. We played in that one. We took third. Um, and then I actually ended up having um, a baby. So, uh, well, I had my first baby. She's one and a half now. Then we had another baby girl. Uh, and she was born in March. So it was kind of tough to um, get away to hockey tournaments. And I couldn't leave my girlfriend at home with both the baby. <laughs> Um, I kind of do most of the planning and all the, you know, getting the roster together for tournaments and entering the tournaments and me with that, me staying home with the babies, we couldn't really go to too much tournaments, not the, the big ones anyway. Um, so I got to play in the Oscana cup this year with the Res Kings. We ended up winning that one. Um, and then our Beardies Blackhawks team, we entered, we enter every year in the FSIN. It's, a, it's our provincials. There's, um, probably our senior team, the rec team. There's a woman, sometimes a woman's team. Um, there's like a masters 45 plus legends, 35 plus. There's even, uh, the old Mushrooms uh, division there, 50 plus, and my dad plays in that one. So, oh. yeah. Be- oh. That's Bush's division. <laughs> Beardy's not every single year. <clears throat> then, yeah, the Freddy. But next year, we'll probably enter in most of all the big ones again. Um, kind of going to – we're going to do a little bit of uh, better fundraising this year and um, kind of pick, pick and choose what tournaments we want to go to next year. We're actually gonna try, try really hard to go to Winnipeg to the oh the late Brent Wilson. We we got told that it's gonna be the last year, and um, we went through a lot a lot of battles with that guy back in the day. So we'd really like to show our support and hopefully try to make it out to their tournament there. Be being nice. like, yeah, being like the the. the team uh you're like reg dunlop right you're the team exactly team that's coach what, that's team player yeah um as like from the manager's point uh i was talking about this with uh a guy today like how much money do you think a team will have to raise like like a tournament like say brent wilson or the freddies or like the sense cup like how much should a team raise on funds just to be comfortable, like imports, your hotels, your gas, your meals and stuff like that? Easily. Well, depends on how far you're going, but I'd say easily 15 to 20, 20 K at least. Um, Comfortably, probably at least 20 K. Um, Like for your imports nowadays, a team that has four imports usually if you want those solid um players that play professional you're looking at 2k per player um sometimes you got to pay their flights but you know it's it's really expensive and so say if we wanted to go to Brent Wilson our our Blackhawks team we'd have to pay four imports so looking around 15 to 2k right there probably each import um then you're looking at probably around like what close to eight eight grand probably around there for hotel rooms for all your players then you also want to look after your your hometown guys like you don't want them traveling all the way to winnipeg spending their own money that they have to survive on at home you know so you'd want to put money in their pocket, you know, or pay gas or even look at renting a charter bus. And you'd want to take care of at least two meals, at least during the tournament over there. So some guys can save some cash, you know, and it's a lot. man. it really, it really is a lot managing a hockey team. Even a, it takes a lot on your family because like you're nose deep in your phone all yeah. day, every day searching players getting their numbers bugging them constantly <laughs> they'll come you know like you want you this. don't gotta bug me <laughs> <laughs> I, the answer is yes already <laughs> i'll pay a thousand in a room <laughs> uh, yeah man. answer your question i would say for sure 
like 20 grand. I was, me and my brother-in-law were thinking about that during the tournament. Um, my brother-in-law is Bryson Monich. He plays for uh, OCN. And um, we were just chatting on like how much it would cost for like a team from say Quebec to come over to Saskatoon every year. Man, it must be so pricey. Yeah. The flight flights for every player, you know, their luggage, that extra like baggage for hockey gear. Oh man. And then you gotta rent a van when they get here. Man, it's I can't even imagine how much money gets thrown around in native hockey circuit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's... probably millions of dollars get spent. <laughs> Probably like a team like that, like Quebec or even like a Sopa took from New Brunswick. Yeah. I think they're probably like at least 40 G's in it when they go to the Freddy, right? Yeah, no kidding. That is expensive. And like, man, hat, my hat is off to those teams that come back here every year. Like, uh, that's really pricey and must take a lot of fundraising, on, unless you got a counselor on the team. That is- <laughs> 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 um, yeah. yeah it's expensive but it's good though i mean like where you're making you're making friendships you're making dreams for the next generation of hockey players and you're making a really good buzz in the community because like i'm sure a lot of you guys had a big fan base uh with you guys being close to saskatoon right you guys oh, have yeah. the, the, a lot of fans watching you guys play yeah, definitely. We're only, I think, like 80, 80 some kilometers away from 80, 80 kilometers north going towards PA. So it's not too far. They definitely come in and pack our games. How uh with you playing like midget triple A and you playing senior hockey and playing a lot of uh, these native tournaments? What advice would you give young kids coming up, uh, guys like 16, 17, 18 years old? Uh, guys that are coming up and like, uh, want to go somewhere basically is just to, uh, man, have fun, have fun what you're doing. Um, stay fit, stay in the gym, stay away from trouble is one, one big thing. Stay away from the nightlife. Nightlife got a lot of, uh, native hockey players. I can say that. Like I, I, Mm -hmm. a lot of guys that could have went so far, but just got stuck in the nightlife and that's just one thing to stay away from. Just keep clean, keep uh, playing hockey. For sure. Uh, before we let you go, uh, we'll uh, finish with our famous, uh, infamous, I guess, our uh, five rapid NIST questions. You ready? Oh yeah, let's go. Uh, first question. Um, what is, what? No, question number one. I'm oh, just... I thought you were like telling me to stop. No, uh, question one. Number one for the Oilers are number one. Uh, baked or fried bannock? Uh, baked. I know. Uh, I think less than twenty five percent of the guests we have on the show say baked bannock. I'm a baked bannock kind of guy. I don't know why a lot of people don't like baked bannock. So we have a gas station right just on the highway, um, um, outside of Duck Lake, going to Prince Albert. And um, my auntie actually sells baked bannock at that gas station. And there's a podcast um, called the Monday Nooner in Saskatchewan. Um, it's just a senior hockey podcast. And they mentioned my auntie's bannock a couple times in that. Uh, in that <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm 100% baked bannock guy here. That's the best uh, snack for the road. If you think about it. some bannock and some jam, man, you're oh, set yeah. for the road. <laughs> Definitely, I love when that butter just melts. Per yeah. <laughs> uh, question number two: Ever use a bed sheet for a door or a curtain? Yes, I have. I don't know. A big, big wolf blanket right on the window. <laughs> just very traditional. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, question number three. Uh, ever, ever see Ernest Mooney as live in concert? Oh, yes. Darn right, man. That's the king around here, here in Manitoba. Yep, he is. Um, question number four Indian taco or 
Indian or Bannock Burger. Bannock Burger. Yeah. Uh, I'm an Indian taco guy, I think. Yeah. You got to live. It's a little bit healthy, I guess. You got the lettuce and tomatoes. So you got to. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's uh, it. Fifth and last question. Can you jig? Yes, I can. Uh, really? My, yeah. My family <laughs> yeah, has a jigging group. It's called the uh, Creeland Dancers. Um, it was created from my um, my late Mushroom Ken, CC Quasis, and um, my Cookum Therese. She, uh, she's still living it today. Um, and uh, they basically created that jigging group Creeland Square Dancers and they're actually still dancing um to this day. My one of my cousin Kevin uh and my cousin Amy, they run that group and they go all over the place. Like they've been to Ontario, a bunch of reserves in Ontario to go show off their skills and yeah, what's the group, name? Um Creeland Square Dancers. And that's, that's uh yeah, awesome. growing up I was always dropped off at my cooking and mushrooms and they would be practicing there and I would just be sitting there watching them dance and I love fiddle music man like uh uh my daughter absolutely loves fiddle music just yesterday I played fiddle music yeah it's awesome <laughs> yeah I, I love fiddle music too I was uh raised uh, from like uh jigging and fiddle music is really big back home in Moose Factory <laughs> and the Quebec side um the Quebec side of the Crees there uh, so yeah, I grew up like uh, dancing and fiddle music. Yeah. I love fiddle music. Like uh, we had Jordan Daniels on the show, and he's from Mistawasis. And yeah, uh, I remember he's that. A, yeah, he's a big uh, filler, and he was actually f- f- playing at the Freddy. So yeah. I was uh, I was wanting to dance, but I got too shy though that Saturday <laughs> afternoon at the Freddy. <laughs> just go be light on your feet. Yeah, just twinkle toes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. We, uh, I know it was short notice. I messaged you. Did I message you today or last night? Uh, I think that was early this morning. Early this morning. I yeah. I'm still, I'm still on cloud nine right now with your wife. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> eh, next year, next year. I hope yeah. the uh, the Corey Perry curse will come on the others. It'll, it'll be lifted. He uh, scored. Uh, scored tonight. He did. Yeah, got the Boy. monkey off his back, yeah. All you have to do when you play with McDavid is drive to the net with your stick on the ice. You'll get a guaranteed goal. I'm no kidding. Like, That's what Kevin Stevens did with Murray Lemieux. He got 51 yeah. of them. <laughs> so. That's all I had to do to playing with the Drews. Just got to go to the net with my stick on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we I'm going to do when I'm 50. We did <laughs> see, though. <laughs> Remember, most we were watching Beauties and... Uh, he had the puck, and you totally just missed it, missed the net. I think uh, it was a wide open net too. I was, I wasn't gonna bring that up. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> you were standing right behind the net, and we just <laughs> saw you with the puck, and you just threw your head up in this towards the light, and just man, never it. mind. I'm still kind of healing from Freddie. I totally forgot to mention that to you guys. I took that solid hit there against Sandy Lake, and um. Two days after the tournament, I couldn't even lay flat or like breathe right or cough or anything. So I was like, "Man, I got to go to the hospital." So I went and checked. It got X ray, and yeah, sure enough, they're like, "You have two cracked ribs." Ooh. It was tough. I still haven't golfed. Um, I haven't even really got back to work. I just did one work of one week of work. Sorry, last week, and didn't really feel no pain, but yeah. Still, that was a tough hit. Uh, a guy from Sandy Lake, his name is Esten Hyman. He's he's one of my bros. Caught me with my head down there. <laughs> but, I, don't yeah. miss, I don't miss those days. Oh, I was sore for a couple of days, man. A couple of weeks, actually. It was tough. All right, that's uh, well, we hope you uh, fully recover, I guess. Since you're 30 plus now, it's going to take a little bit longer than when you were in your <laughs> 20s. So be patient. We've been yeah. there. <laughs> no doubt takes, it. takes a bit. Yeah, it takes a bit. All right, bro. Thanks for All coming right. on the show. And uh, we'll keep in touch. And hopefully one of these days we'll uh, have to get together. 
Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. It was, it was nice chatting with you. Hopefully, we'll see you guys. Uh, yep. And probably next year at Freddy. Yeah, hopefully or, sooner. If or or maybe, Brad Wilson, if you yeah, go. Yeah, I was going to say that. If you guys, if we end up uh, managing on getting there and maybe you guys come watch. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. All right, take yeah, care, have, and we'll uh, keep in touch, eh? Definitely. Have a good summer, guys. Yeah, you yep. too. Go Panthers. You too. Oh, how easy. <laughs> See you later, guys. Yeah. yeah. See ya. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back from our interview with Lucas. Uh, like, like we mentioned before the show, this guy's a beauty, and he uh, played a, played a lot of hockey in mm-hmm. Western Canada, and one of the nicest guys we, we uh, had the opportunity to meet at the Freddy. So, it won't be the the last time we'll uh, catch up with him. And no, he's in, like we talked about on the. His interview. He's a big Oilers fan. And yes, so, yes. And uh, tonight he's at the Snoop Dogg concert in Saskatoon. Snoop Dogg. Did you see the shirt that he was that he's gonna <laughs> wear tonight? Yeah, yeah. He made a shirt of uh, Snoop wearing an Edmonton Oilers jersey. So, so yeah. I I had the chance to go to Snoop this past week in Winnipeg, but I mm. I said no. Like. I guess it was just uh, like a big, uh, like lots of smoke from like people mm-hmm. smoking weed and stuff like that. It's like, wow. <laughs> you probably just get like a secondhand high and just yeah, I know. run to the concession and just get munchies and stuff yeah. like that. But I mean, I do like rap, like old school rap, like, like Dr. Dre and mm-hmm. like Snoop. But I just going to a concert, like I went to one rap concert and there's like 10 different guys have mics and they'll just go, yeah, yeah, jump, jump. Like, Come on, yeah. Anyone can do that. And it's, it wasn't really, it was boring to me. So I'm not going to go, go back to another rap concert. So like rap, they don't play, like they'll just play their tracks over a DJ and like they, they, they'll just sing over their own voice. So a lot of the times they'll say like three words and you'll hear their their track, then they'll say another three words. So, but yeah, whatever. Snoop, Snoop Baloop. I wonder if you remember that movie, uh, <laughs> old school, uh, old school. If that, Snoop that Baloop. Pimp, yeah, let's go streaking. I wonder if that pimp that's in that movie with Snoop is touring to make money, 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 make money, money, money. Yeah, yeah, damn, we should have went. Yeah, but um, yeah, whatever. Snoop, Snoop Loop. <laughs> what else? Is, he's on uh, Sturski and Hutch. Remember? Uh, I never. I actually never watched Sturski and Hutch. Never watched it. No, funny. He plays like a like a drug dealer on on that show. But uh, speaking of movies, uh, with yeah. the Edmonton Oilers and La Bamba, uh. This week's Res Hockey Top 5. Top 5 movies, music movies, like of musicians and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like uh, almost like an autobiography, I guess. Mm-hmm. you could. So, yeah, this is uh, this week's Top 5. This is my list. And um, these are five movies that I enjoy to watch. Well, four, maybe mm-hmm. three. But I couldn't <laughs> think of. I couldn't. I was really uh, stumped on this one. Uh, uh. So. Okay, number five is Bob Marley. He uh he had a new movie come out this year. Did you watch it yet? Not yet, no. It's actually pretty good. It's kind of it's all right. I mean, Bob Marley is the king, right, of reggae. Yeah. And he uh did you know that he died from like they could have amputated his toe and he could have lived, but he said no. Really? And, I did yeah, not know that. Yeah. He had like he had cancer and like it could have amputated his toe. Big toe and he could have lived, but so I would have I would have said, yeah, cut off the damn toe. But yeah, anyways, yeah, Bob Marley, uh, his movie is number five on my list. Uh number four is uh Bohemian's Rhapsody. Um the movie about Queen. Um I watched it on the bus when I was going to Edmonton, so 
it's a good movie, but it's a movie that I can't unthink of our friend Mitch Gagnon, uh, yeah. Shagno, Shags, I know. Because <laughs> Shags dressed up as Freddie Mercury when Halloween and it looked exactly like him. So now it's just stuck in my mind when I see Freddie Mercury. I'll just think of Shags. So it's a good movie, though. Queen's a really good movie. Just movie about uh, living the life in the 70s. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's number three. Four for our rest hockey top five. Uh, next, like we talked about this movie lots, it's La Bamba. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's a movie you can watch over and over, right? Yeah, and the sayings are funny, like you could probably just go for days talking about Bob. Yeah, uh, number two is uh, I watched this movie a lot because my sisters used to watch this movie a lot, is Selena. Did you ever watch that one? Selena? No. I'm not a big Lopez fan, so I just... So, I tend to veer away from her movies. Just Jennifer Lopez? That. Yeah. Did you see that, like, all the videos, like, they're taking out the music and stuff like that, and, like, she can't sing, eh? Jennifer Lopez? No, she's... My friend of mine, I can't remember, colleague, I can't remember what, but they said that uh, the only thing Selena's... Or Selena. The only thing Jennifer Lopez is good at is being famous. Yeah. Like she has that swagger, that and walk. Shaking, and... shaking her, uh, so, her bannock. So oh, I don't. She didn't even have bannock. Never mind. Like she's not a good, good actor. She's not a good singer. She may be a great performer, but I don't, as far as talent wise, I don't think she has much talent. That they no, she can't recognize. sing because there's a lot of like, of course, like TikTok and stuff like all. Like my algorithm yeah. will be, like is a lot like some of it will be music yeah. and stuff like that and like uh, conspiracies, so like they uh, interview a girl that did a lot of singing for Jenny on the Block. Oh yeah, and she doesn't get like they really like she sang some tracks and stuff like that and it was on the album and they just cut her loose and like never paid her royalties or anything like that. And people are saying that she's like not even from the block. Like she, when she moved out out of uh, Queens, New York, she never went back. Yeah, she's, so she seems to have forgotten where she apparently claims to be from. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, I grew up watching that movie with my sisters. Uh, that was my sister Erin's favorite movie, Selena Cantania. So, but did you ever like? It was sad. Like Selena's. Fan club manager shot her and killed her because her manager, fan club manager, was stealing money and they confronted her and she shot her. So, Jeez. Um, anyways, uh, number one for uh, Rest Hockey top five music movies is uh, my favorite, Walk the Line. Johnny Cash. I love Johnny Cash. I grew up listening to The Man in Black, so that's why... With uh, Mr. Phoenix and Joaquin Phoenix and what is her name? Witherspoon Reese Reese Witherspoon. That's it. So yeah, that's an awesome movie. It's one of those movies you can just put on and sit back and watch. And so yeah, those are my. Do you have any favorite music movies? Uh, I would have took out Selena out of spite and put in uh, Austin Butler's rendition of Elvis. A what? Austin Butler. What movie is that? He played. He played in the movie Elvis. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, that was a that was a good movie too. <laughs> yeah. Another one. Well, it's not based on a like a live musician. Is uh, a Star Is Born. That's probably my top five. Um, no, you don't like that movie with Lady Gaga in it? Uh, I know what happens. It's this has been off of Broadway, it's been made three times now. Yeah, I watched but the I, first one, I watched the one in the 80s with Chris Christopherson, Barbara, and uh, Barbara Streis, yeah, whatever. But that one, but yeah, that's I don't know for some reason, I just love that movie. I think I'd watch it just for just to watch Dave Chappelle because he's got a lot of talent. He's a yeah. good actor. Yeah. Uh, what else is good music movie? Uh, Wayne's World. You could count Wayne's, that as. Yeah. Was that you can? You could. Would you I'd, consider that a music movie? I think you can. 
That's probably okay. I'll go Wayne's Road. Would probably yeah. be my number one for sure. <laughs> Vindy, Vindy Wah. Yeah. I mean, you could probably that's a movie you could quote just as much as like uh, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. So yeah, I'd go Wayne's Road for sure, or Wayne's Road Two. It wasn't as good as Wayne's Road no. One, but but it was it's still a good movie. So yeah, I would go totally Wayne's World. <laughs> um. What else? Uh, okay, we talked about YouTube. We talked about the finals. Uh, we talked about movies. This Friday, June 21st. National Indigenous Day. National Indigenous Day. So we just want to say happy Indigenous Day to all our brothers and sisters and cousins out there in Turtle Island. Um, it's. Uh, do you have anything planned? Uh, weather permitting, I am gonna probably go check out the power at the harbor front. It's uh, we get the day off, so yeah, is it everyone get the day off, or is it just like first nation, like indigenous organizations? Uh, maybe chief and council only. Chief Boom! and council, <laughs> chief and council should make that a national holiday, but but yeah, it's good, to, uh, good to be uh, recognized and have a day off, so. Especially on a Friday, so it's a long yeah. weekend. So I'm not gonna uh, disagree with Chief and Council on this one or no. with the National Grant Chief <laughs> at AFN. So yeah, thanks. Um, there's a kid from Moose Cree First Nation. His name is Jordan McLeod. Um, I know Jordan's parents, uh, Marilyn and Daryl McLeod. Uh, I've known their families all my lives, and my parents are friends with uh Marilyn and Daryl's parents, and he played um, rep hockey, rep U18. It's like, uh, it's almost like midget double A, I guess. It's below mm. the triple A midget level. Um, but he plays played for the Timmins Flyer this past season, and he was probably one of the best players in this U18 rep league um, based out of Northern Ontario. <laughs> Uh, his first year midget, he played midget triple A or U18 triple A for Timmins Majors. But I guess he decided to play, not to play triple A, and he wanted to play uh, rep because if you play triple A, you can't play high school sports. It's It's been like this forever and ever, and you can't play basketball, football, or wrestling. So he decided volleyball. volleyball sorry for your. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's a big basketball guy. He's uh he wanted to play basketball with his buddies at TH at Timmins High in Timmins, so he d- he decided not to play U eight uh, AAA U eighteen. So he uh, had a really good year playing f- at the U eighteen rep league for the Timmins Flyers. Such so good that he got an invite to the Sioux Greyhounds rookie development camp oh. at the Ontario Hockey League, <laughs> and he did so good there. He got invited back to the Sioux Greyhounds main camp. To the main camp. That's pretty good. That is, it just shows you guys, like, even if you don't play triple eight, keep playing hard. Yeah. Hit the gym, eat healthy, like, get a lot of sleep. Your body needs that rest, especially when you're a teenager. Yeah. Keep focus. Like, it might be a speed bump or... Or, like, you may get frustrated and discouraged, but to keep going strong, if if you don't make AAA, you could still play, like, this U18 rep and still get scouted and recognized. And Jordan's, uh, Jordan McLeod is a perfect example of making it, getting a tryout with the Noid Chell team. I mean, it just goes to show you, no matter where you're playing, someone will see you. So, so keep working hard, and people will recognize your hard work, your dedication, your commitment. Mm-hmm. And you, you might be the next Jordan and get a tryout, not just like OHL. You can get a tryout with a tier two junior A or junior B, which is still good hockey. So, um, mm-hmm. if you don't make these AAA teams, there's always it's just a little speed bump in, on your journey. So keep working hard, keep skating, and you never know, right, Bush? You never know. So it's good to see stories like these. It's yeah. just a prime example. And I think uh, it's it's good to see. I mean, it's just uh, even if Jordan doesn't make the Sioux Greyhounds, it's just he can say I went to a major junior camp and, yeah. um, and I just played U18 rep, which is like a double A, double A uh, 
caliber. So, so we just want to tell, encourage all the young players that just keep trying if you don't make the triple league teams, because you never know, you could be the next Jordan and mm -hmm. get scouted and get noticed. So you, it's just, it's just a speed bump, I guess, in your journey. So keeps getting hard. You, you never know. So we wish a lot of, uh, these uh, indigenous players, good luck because a lot of them are having tryouts for their fall teams already, which believe it or not, yeah. which is kind of early, a little early for my books. Yeah, mine too. Because <laughs> back back in our days, like come September, that's when you, you usually have the main tryout. Mm -hmm. But a lot of like a lot of these AAA teams are like already trying out and have teams made. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy. So, and uh, parents. Spring hockey is going on right now, and it's okay if your kids don't play spring hockey, man. Enjoy yeah. other sports. There's soccer, there's baseball, there's lacrosse. Let them have fun. Let them play outside this summer and don't uh, be so hard on them to shoot pucks, go rollerblading or whatever. Just let, mm -hmm. them, let them be kids. Let them have fun with their friends. Um, I think nowadays a lot of kids play hockey 12 months of the year. But uh, give them time to just uh, relax and be a kid and have fun with their friends. Look at Wayne Gretzky. He didn't skate 12 months of the year. No. Nope. He he played lacrosse. He played baseball. He played other sports. Yep. And look, he was the greatest player. One of Ever. the greatest players. Do you think Connor McDavid's in the same same class as Wayne Gretzky? If, if he wins this cup, um, he'll be some he, – this will define him as well. But even Messi says that he's just – he knows he's a once in a generation talent. Like, what about? Do you think <laughs> hockey player? I mean, there's too many generation of players now. Like, like you got Ov, Sid the Kid, and now you got Bedard. Is there too many generational players? Like, remember when we talked to Theo Fleur? He on the show he said that there's like compared. Love. He he was comparing when he his era when he had like Steve Eisenman yeah. and. Ray Borg and like those guys could be generational players because they were so good, but they weren't because the NHL was so good back then compared to yeah. now where it's, it's just, I like thinking of things like that because it just shows you like how good was this era compared to like to yeah. today, today's era. Right? I still like his, I listened to his, uh, I still like his quote when I asked him about that breakaway. He goes, yeah, I just had a one on one with uh, Jeff Bookaboom. <laughs> yeah, I just got a kick out of that. It was funny. Yeah, I mean, he beat he did beat you guys, the Oilers. Yeah. Game six, forced to game seven. It's just like <clears throat> uh, it's just like basketball. Like people say, is LeBron James better than Michael Jordan? No, no. I say I say that too. I say. Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time because yeah. he had to play against – it was a different era, right? So yeah. it's hard to compare eras. But I don't think LeBron James would be able to play in the 90s. I don't think so. The, like, the, remember the Detroit Pistons, like how bad they were? Like, they were called the bad boys. Yeah. When well, you got Pat Ewing. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, like, New York Knicks were bad, too, back in the day. Like, John Starks, John Sally. Like, they had a really strong – defensive team and they were mean so anyways but yeah i all, right. always have that this discussion with nick because he's a big lebron guy and i'm a big michael jordan guy yeah we go back and forth like for years and years but he always says oh yeah michael jordan had no he had scott and Sc scotty pippen and lebron james has no one when comparing championships and like that stuff like that so, but <clears throat> it's a discussion that no one will ever win, nope. and it's going to go on forever. Just like hockey, like is it Gordy yeah. Howe the greatest? Bobby Orr the greatest? Grasky the greatest? Sean Horkoff? Sean Horkoff. <laughs> Pisani? Fernando Pisani, the un, the hero for 06. Or Chris Pronger? Yeah. Just imagine if Pronger would have stayed in Edmonton for years and years. No, because that whole team disbanded. So, like, say, when's game seven? Game seven is on, so the, well, I think Monday? Probably Monday, yeah. Monday. 
What are you going to do on Friday when if the Oilers lose? Um, I haven't thought that far yet. So, but what are you going to do if they win? Like how you should go like make a video or get Hunter to make a video of you just jumping up and down and we'll post it. <laughs> the last. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, it's not Sunday. The, the game seven is projected to be uh, Monday. Monday. Yeah. They have that two days off because of travel, right? Yeah. So. But yeah, we'll, we shall see. It yeah. should be exciting on Friday for game six. What's your yeah. prediction? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by my prediction: four one Oilers, including the empty net. Four one. I'll say two one, in overtime. Ooh. Um, I wanted it to be a low score because I bought a second in a hockey pool. <laughs> <laughs> because the way they do it back home in Moose Factory and like surrounding area. You can pick a second from zero to 60. Then if they score on your second, say 45. Yeah. Number 45. So you have 20 chances from 45 seconds to 1945 of them scoring on your goal or scoring on your second. Sorry. Yeah. So whoever gets the last second correct, whoever scores the last goal and it lands on your second, you win that whole pot. So um, my sister is doing a pot, a hockey pool. It's two hundred and fifty dollars a second, oh. but for each goal that is scored, you win six hundred dollars. So if they score on forty five, and you pick forty five, you win six hundred bucks. Oh, nice! So the like the pot is at twelve thousand dollars. So for every goal, it's minus six hundred dollars. So if it's like a one nothing game and you yeah. and it goes on your second, you win like twelve grand. Oh. But I was hoping Florida wouldn't come back um, yesterday because it was like, what, six goals? What was it? The score five, five, three? Five, three, yeah. So that was eight goals. So that would have been a crappy <laughs> last goal. Yeah. So I yeah. want it to be a low scoring game because I want, I'm on second 17. Yeah. Um, I went half worse with my brother, Sean. So I'm hoping the last goal for. To, uh, Friday's game is going to land on 17. Mm. I think we win like whatever is left of that pot of 12 grand. So if it's so $1,800 because of three goals minus 12,000, that's still 10 G's you win. No. Well, I got to split it with my brother. So I'll probably get like eight and I'll give him two. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's that's the only reason I've been kind of really watching because I've been buying hockey pools and but uh I can't wait till the finals is over because there's so many people buying pools, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like and I've been buying just to help and support support people who are fundraising because it's a lot of people are fun, fundraising for like good causes, like stuff like that, but I won't I have to know what they're fundraising for if I'm going to buy. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but anyways, like uh, it's been a long season of hockey pools and stuff like that. So I can't wait for that to be done. So <laughs> save some money from that. But, but anyways, uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us for episode 120. Uh, I'm Trav and with me is my uh, right hand man, AKA, Bush, aka Bush Rat, aka the sure. Chief. <laughs> so, yeah. thanks for joining us, the Chief and I. Has anyone called you Chief yet? Nope. I'm gonna get Polly. I'm gonna text him. Hey, start <laughs> yeah. calling. Start calling Bush uh, the people, Chief, know, and he'll do it till yeah. He'll do it for the rest of his life, sitting on his bidet. Yeah. <laughs> bidet, yeah. Bidet. <laughs> Um, speaking of that, I'll tell you a quick story. Well, I just All said right. that. Uh, Bush, me, Bush, and Polly. Who who else was in your truck? Heinzy, Heinzy, Steve. I mean, Steve <laughs> <laughs> Heinz. I just thought of that hockey player that used to that played uh, James Heinz. Sorry. Yep. Uh, we were traveling to Minnesota, 
And all of a sudden, um, Pauly starts talking about his, uh, what do you call it? Bidet? Bidet. Bidet. Yeah, that he bought on Amazon. He was telling us how it works and that it's a good buy and we should buy one. So so he, he didn't go into detail like when he used it, but he just kept talk, talking about it. So yeah. that's the story behind yeah. Pauly and his the bidet. bidet. So. Anyways, I think I said too much. Sorry, Paulie. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, next week, I think l- our guest for next week is uh, Lincoln Moore from Garden River First Nation. Lincoln played for the Saginaw Spirit and is a 2024 Memorial Cup runner. So nice. he's a young kid and we're uh, looking forward to talking some hockey and his Memorial Cup run with Saginaw. So that should be a good show. So uh, yeah, have a good weekend. Have a happy Indigenous Day and uh, be proud of who we are. Yeah, we're still here after uh, after a lot lots. of. We'll just say lots after lots. Yes, Travis, we'll go, trials and tribulations. I yes, guess you can say right. So yeah, we're still here. We're still strong people, and we'll always be here. And we're uh, happy First Nations, Métis, and Inuits. So be proud of who you are and. Uh, celebrate Indigenous Day yeah. for you. So, mm-hmm. other than that, we'll uh, see you guys next week. Yep. Have a good weekend, guys. Peace. Peace.